Yes, people, this is the day you've been asking about. I'm Mark Rudin, welcome back to Nomad Boat Building, and today we're going to flip the Catalina Wherry. All right, the weekend has come and gone, and our Sikaflex here is dry. Now, just to recap, why did I use Sikaflex for this particular glue application? It's a great adhesive for this particular kind of situation where you've got an oak rub rail which doesn't bond well with epoxy. The rub rail itself wasn't super fair, it was a bit bit hinky along its length um, and so I was worried about uh, wanting to make sure it was using a good gap filling adhesive. It would have been nice to use like tight bond 3 which would bond to oak well but it needs a really good tight joint for that and I think it was probably tight enough but nah, I didn't want to risk it. Also I already had the tube of Sikaflex open from doing the bottom in the cut water. The tube was like three quarters full and I didn't want it to go to waste. Once you cracked it open, it has a pretty limited shelf life and putting like rubber caps on the ends or sticking something in it doesn't really do a very good job of keeping this from kicking off. The best thing I've ever found is you just squeeze out a noodle and leave it hanging there and it will create its own seal. And if you're careful pulling that noodle out, it'll break free right where it hits the wet stuff and then you can keep using that tube but you don't have a long time that you can leave it like that. I mean, once you've done it, I'd say you got to be using this again within about a week. Uh, beyond that, it, the cure will start to creep its way in there and then you're done. So rather than waste the whole tube of glue, might as well use it and this is a good use for it. Now we played around with the idea of not doing a cleanup while it was wet and I don't dislike that idea because this stuff is hard to work with well, it's not hard to work with. It is just messy to work with. Putting the tape on here and just leaving it alone, I think that was actually a pretty good move. I suppose what I could have done different is maybe taped off both sides and then just tooled that down. That would have been good. But what I did find is just using my multi-master with this slicing blade on here. It's just like a straight blade. It's got a slight, very slight bevel on the back side, although from the factory that's just dead flat and it's beveled on this side. Um, so that works really well for peeling off the Sikaflex. So I'll show you me how I do that in a bit. There's very little to peel off. It's just that there's this little nubble that's right along this joint that it that stays behind. Putting these gluing blocks on here, man, that was like, that was everything because this stuff is so slimy. It's really hard to sort of position things where, where you want it. Even when you do, it might want to shift around. So having those positive blocks on there, that was an absolute lifesaver. So I could just slam it on and squish it down until it hit my blocks and then clamp it off. So I'm really glad about those. So clamping, what I should have done is made some backing pads out of the same thickness as the rib bands on the inside because there's a lot of clamps that I couldn't quite place properly and it forced them to be a little bit high. Now it doesn't really matter, but it made it a bit more awkward placing some of them, getting them just so. So if I just had some clamping box that were the right uh, thickness, that would have really helped. But it also would have allowed me to do some sort of tooling here. Maybe it's good that I couldn't clamp them properly because it prevented me from trying to clean this up and tool it at that time. Um, so maybe I would have just been in for a bigger, more longer, messier cleanup than uh, I did have. So it's one of those things you can't know which is the better way unless you do one side one way and the other side a totally different way and then sort of put the clock on them and time them. Anyhow, for the most part, this tape seems to have worked out well. Using my batten jacks at the other end of the run, or what I did was I just clamped them to a frame, so I had something to drop one end of this into while I bent it around and got it positioned. So it wasn't holding it close to the hull, it was just carrying the the weight of it and allowed me to sort of slide this into position and get the first clamp on properly. That was a big, big help. If I didn't have those on there, it would have been, forget it, forget it, it would have been a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is I'm just carefully just doing a little trimming right along my glue line here. And this is all dry now, so it's relatively easy to do. So if I run my knife around there, 
comes off pretty easily. Now up here, it's a bit thick. I need to trim it on the back side some. But here we go. Look at this. Beautiful. The other side I had, I guess my tape was sitting a little bit higher. I definitely got more of a glue line and that's where the Multimaster came in. Like right here, there's a bit of a nubble. Just like that. This stuff, these things work really well on these uh, flexible adhesives. Pretty easy. Actually, that works. It works easier than using a utility knife for that. I, I don't know what it is. Something about that reciprocating action makes cutting this type of material. It's night and day, I tell you. Night and day. Come on. <laughs> uh, come on. That's all the stringers in there that it all sort of glued on a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. We're free. We are free. Right. That's not safe. Let's see, see what we can do about some lift and tackle here. There's one rule I've learned about building wooden boats is that you want to flip that boat with as few people around as possible because many hands just makes for confusion. Now there are times when it helps to have a bunch of neighbors around and there are times that you just want to do it with the bare minimum of crew. Here in my shop I mostly do it on my own or maybe with just one or two other people. Now I honestly hadn't put a whole lot of thought into how this is all going to go. <laughs> course. Why would I do that? OK. 
Okay, so far so good. This is absolutely not the best plan, I'm sure of it. <laughs> uh, okay, what can I do that's smarter? Let's try and be a little bit smarter. I just don't have a good lifting point back here. Um, okay. Oh, maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do this. As usual, it's not very heavy, you know, it's... I don't know what it's weighing in at. I don't have a scale handy. Not bad. Not bad. All right. We're just gonna go right up to the ceiling here, I think. All right. Right, that went exactly as I hoped it would. Uh, I knew there was going to be a whole lot of creaking and groaning and crashing going on getting this thing to peel away, but this came off really nicely. There's just a couple of spots where it kind of hung on a bit hard. I might have just a, a whisper of a plank edge to sort of doctor up a little bit. But uh, we achieved what we wanted to. Um, I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just take apart the mold, knock off the battens, knock out the uh, station molds and then we'll roll this thing over and set it back down on the strong back. I'm not sure if I'm going to work on it on the strong back here or um, I might just think about getting this thing out of here and just putting a couple saw horses in here because sometimes the strong back itself is uh, not always in the primo location and you kind of bark your shins on it and Sometimes it's nice just to be able to move the boat out of the way, but we'll we'll see what uh, how I feel once I've got this flipped over See if it's at a good working height and all that sort of stuff Now before I knock this apart the one thing I noticed was when I was doing this It would have been good if I had a second rib band running right along here where the tuck is uh, Just because just to lay one plank on to bevel up against the next one That would be useful for sure Okay, I'm just gonna fly at it I know some of you are probably thinking, why would he take it apart? Why not just set the mold aside? Someone will want another one, right? Well, in my experience, by the time anybody's asking about one of these, it's quite a ways down the road. And uh, I'll probably come up with some other thing that I want to do a little bit differently. Maybe you want to change up the plank lines or I don't know. Who knows? Um, Point being is that I don't have the space to store this thing as it is, even if I wanted to. See, it's the nice thing about using a pin nailer here. These are just popping off pretty easily, except for that one, obviously. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Ah, where'd my pipe mark? Oh, here we go. Okay, folks, I just want to remind you that these videos are made possible due to the support of viewers like you through Patreon. This week, I want to welcome Helga Peterson into the fold. 
If you want to help us out on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. You can find links in the corner or down in the description, but you can also like and subscribe and share these videos and that helps me too. All right, let's get right back to work. All right, I got uh, molds out of the way, some straps on the hull. So let's see if we can get this thing rolled over. sure if my heights are correct or not here but okay Gives us sort of an interesting view, sort of a water, a water height view of the boat. All right, let's settle this thing down and get another look at it. Interesting. So all the backing blocks just pop out easy. Oh, I am quite pleased with our results here. So here's the, the sort of box keel I've referred to so many times. It's this little configuration right here. Look at that, eh? See how that just creates this, this little box right in there, this tunnel. Well, I think, uh, I think our client Joe's gonna like this. It feels quite roomy, especially back aft and, and you know what, the, it, this is the whole point of this design is that it gives you this big area back here. So you can imagine if you're uh, dealing with some a pile of netting, you know, you've got this big, you, you can stand down here easily because the bottom's flat and then you've got all this volume back here that wouldn't be there if this was like a straight up dory hull. If this were a straight dory hull, these guys would just be coming, whoosh, you know, it'd be like you know, maybe 12 inches wide or something at best back here. The entry feels relatively fine, which is good. I wanted that. I wanted him to be able to sort of punch through waves and still have enough, uh, you know, volume in the cheeks to raise the boat. I think we got that. It feels like we got that. In the world of small wooden boat building, the day we flip the boat, that's our whiskey plank day. That's the day that everything changes. That's the day that our, this thing that looks like a big turtle that's been sitting in your workshop gets turned over and you see it in a completely different light and usually it looks a lot bigger. And we also get to move on to a completely different phase of the work. We get to move on to trimming out the boat and that takes time and consideration. We have to think about the functionality of the boat, we have to think about drainage, we have to think about how much weight we want to put into the boat because the hull is a bit fixed, but from here on in, we have a lot of control. Do we want to build it heavy? Do we want to build it light? What does the customer want? How are the finishes going to be applied to all these finishing details? We want to think about all of that stuff. So please join me again next time when we start building up the cantilever wherry. And until then, how about you watch how we flipped over the 2.4 meter project? All right, see you later, folks.